violence in Greece as thousands protest against new austerity measures. The government says they're needed to secure another bailout from foreign lenders. But is another bailout really the right prescription for Greece and for the Eurozone? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the programme. I'm Taymor Nabili. A 24-hour strike got underway in Greece on Wednesday as the government debated more unpopular cutbacks. Thousands of people blockaded Parliament, trying to send a message that they will not stand for more hardship. But the government says more cutbacks are inevitable if Greece is to secure international rescue loans. Now, Greece is already the beneficiary of more than $150 billion in EU and international monetary fund money. And there's a further $100 billion that may now be needed. Unemployment is at an all-time high in the country. Nonetheless, the government now has no tools to fight it. That's because it's so deep in debt as being forced to take measures that will cut economic activity rather than stimulate it. Here are just some of the numbers. The public debt in Greece is expected to hit $502 billion this year. If you average that out amongst the 11.3 million people in the country, it translates to an average of $44,000 per citizen. Somehow, the government needs to raise that money. Not all at once, of course, but a substantial amount is needed now. How to get it is one of the questions we're going to be debating with our guests today. They are Vagelis Agapitos, who's a Greek businessman and an independent economist. Fotis Bobolas is an activist and a protester who's been involved in Wednesday's demonstrations. And Yanis Varoufakis is Professor of Economics at the University of Athens. Gentlemen, thank you all for joining us today. Um, the situation is fluid and changing all the time, and who knows uh, what is going to result out of all of this. But, um, Fotis, let me begin with you, if I could. Uh, tell me about the events on the streets of Athens. What is it uh, that you think you are going to achieve by protesting, and, and how do you think this is going to play out? Well, uh, currently we're facing... Uh uh, a rather unprecedented uh, or extraordinary situation. We have uh, 300 um, members of the parliament uh, who are supposed to uh, be uh, the representatives of, uh, of Greek people uh, who are uh, uh, generally considered to have lost their legitimacy. Uh, furthermore, these, uh, these members of the parliament have been uh, prosecuted from uh, a group of uh, activists uh, for high treason, uh, I'm uh, one of them. So, um, uh, and they push to, to have this, uh, this deadly uh, package of austerity measures uh, uh, voted. Uh, from the other hand, we have hundreds of thousands of people in the streets uh, right. from, you know, from, from uh, all kinds of, of uh, political spectrum. And the, the question is, who is really represented the, the country? We believe it's the second, uh, the second. Well, let, let me stop uh, you there for a minute, because I, I, I want to try and be clear exactly what the protest is about here. Now, you've been talking about uh, the government being illegitimate, and you've been talking about uh, representation. Now, is it is it the government that you're angry with, or is it the state of the economy? Uh, or, or let me phrase the question in a slightly different way: If this government was to step down and a new government was to be elected, would you be happier and would you be accepting of austerity measures? Well, uh, we believe that it is the Greek people who should decide for, for, for their uh, destiny, just like uh, Iceland uh, did some uh, two years ago. So uh, we really need to have a referendum in which uh, the Greek people will decide whether we accept uh, the external debt or we den denounce it uh, in part or in total as an, a product of uh, 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 corruption, uh, whether we want to leave the Eurozone uh, for a, a national uh, uh, currency, whether we want our uh, zombie banks to be nationalized, 
and whether we want a new uh, constitution and a new political system. All right. Well, these are, that's, a, that's a pretty broad slate of demands. I mean, that's not just one referendum. That's, a, that's an entire debate on the, uh, many of the key functions of the society, it would appear. Let me uh, go to Vagelis Agapitos, uh, an independent economist and a businessman there. How do you assess the state uh, of, of the country right now? And uh, what do you think uh, of what Fotis has been saying? Uh, I believe that uh, uh, Greece at the moment, and uh, the Greek government in particular, is, uh, has got itself into a corner. Uh, it has no time, no money, no political consensus for the measures that are needed to take place, no social support because it has lost its, its touch with the, with the people, and it has no alternatives. So all this, uh, if you combine it with a polyphony in, uh, among our uh, European Union partners and the IMF uh, lead to very limited options being available to the government. Well, the talk, the talk um, right now is that Papandreou is, the, is, is asking now for a coalition government uh, and uh, an, an attempt to address some of the political discontent. But I'm still trying to get to the heart of is this a political issue or is this an economic issue? Would an entirely new government actually make a difference to the whole equation or do we need a complete re uh, overhaul of the economic situation? In my opinion, uh, what uh, Greece needs is a new economic model. The current model, which was based on a very large public sector, on a relatively uncompetitive private sector, on subsidies, whether they were from the European Union or from cheaper loans from banks, etc., uh, with no proper criteria uh, to... Uh, uh, it, we're supporting businesses that were not as fit as they should have been to compete on an international, globalized, uh, competitive marketplace. All right, let uh, me... We've had a very large government, which obviously led to uh, deficits that were uh, clearly they're not sustainable. So basically what we, ha what we do experience at the moment is a collapse of an economic model, but you have the, uh, the politicians being on, and the current government being on effectively a suicide mission. Well, I mean a political suicide mission. In effect, by having to take very tough measures, the chances are they're not going to be re-elected. All right, well, let, half let, of them, let, me stop, they, let me stop you there, because, because what, what you're doing is proposing a, a classic capitalist model uh, and blaming the failures now on things like government and, and public sector uh, economic policies. Uh, let me take this to Yanis Varoufakis, professor of economics at Athens University. Is, is that really what the problem is here? Because a lot of people say the problem is not the Greeks' uh, existing economic model. It's the fact that they don't actually have a functioning economic model at all, let alone uh, one that relies on the public sector. That the Greek economy and that the Greek state uh, for decades now has been typified by a number of malignancies, there is no doubt of but what we are experiencing at the moment is the manifestation of a Euro crisis, a Eurozone crisis, with Greece being the canary in the mine. For the reasons that have to do with uh, the inefficiency of the Greek state uh, and also the lack of competitiveness of the private sector, it is Greece that uh, is the first domino that fell. But even if uh, you had uh, access to a delete button and you pressed it and the Greek problem was eliminated and Greece and its citizens and their debt uh, were annulled and erased from the face of the planet, the Euro system would be in exactly the same uh, conundrum that it finds itself in. Okay, Can it, problem, let, me stop, let me stop you there for a moment if I could. I mean, we'll talk about the, the implications for, sure. for Europe as a whole in a second, but uh, we're still trying to get to the heart of what the problem is in Greece. And Fotis, let me come back to you on this, because surely uh, part of the problem here is not necessarily uh, the government or the economic model uh, that they choose to try and make work in the country. Surely part of the problem is the, is the population. No one pays their taxes in Greece. The, the, the population is not exactly uh, working towards helping government and helping the nation fulfill its own financial obligations, is it? Well, we don't share uh, um, this, uh, this point of view. Uh, we are among the most uh, hard-working uh, people in the Eurozone. In, in the whole uh, European uh, Union. Uh, we have a, um, a, a country with full of uh, uh, resources and uh, know-how and certain 
uh, industries uh, like uh, our uh, tourism and uh, naval uh, uh, commercial uh, uh, navy etc and uh, we could uh, uh, have a comeback and uh, stand on our feet the well, you, I mean, you, 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 may, you may be hard working but the fact is that no one pays their taxes in Greece isn't that the case uh, we think it's about the same situation all around the world. Uh, there's always the black uh, economy. Uh, the, po the, the, the big problem is our debt, and we believe that uh, most of the debt is uh, uh, the product of, uh, of corruption. So uh, uh, that's why we, uh, we protest, and uh, we want to decide for ourselves what we all want right. to do let, let, with, let me with, get yeah, uh, let me give Yanis to say here because I know you, there's something you want to bring up. Yanis, go ahead. Yes, I thought that, was, that question was posed to me. Yeah. Uh, look, the, the, what I wanted to say in response to your question about uh, tax evasion, which is of course uh, a fact uh, of life here in Greece and has been since the 50s, the 1850s. It's completely correct and completely and utterly irrelevant. Ireland is not a corrupt state. Ireland has uh, citizens uh, who re respect the social norms of uh, paying their taxes. It's an efficient market economy and yet it's sitting on the same dock as Greece is. Of course, the reasons why Ireland fell as a second domino are completely different to the ones that Greece fell. But the causes of the crisis, which is percolating throughout the different parts of Europe, both geographically and in terms of private sector, banking sector and uh, sovereign sector, uh, the, the reasons are the same, and the reasons are that we have a euro system which was not designed to sustain the major shock waves of the earthquake of the, the great financial crisis of 2008. Well, do you think if, do you think if Greece was not part of the eurozone that it wouldn't be having these problems? I think that Greece would be having problems uh, of, uh, of a different magnitude at the moment. It would still be having problems, but let me put it very simply, it would at least be able to devalue its currency and try to inflate itself out of its debt situation. The situation would not be pretty, like it wasn't pretty in the 1970s when Greece went through a, a major financial crisis following the oil crisis, but at least it was not locked uh, into a monetary system that was so frigid and, and so unresponsive to the crisis of uh, a, 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 perif a peripheral state like Greece that, that uh, we are now in a situation where not only are we bringing our own society down, but unfortunately, as a Euro spe European speaking now, we are bringing the rest of the Eurozone down. Okay. And I'm afraid that the, the, the attempts to ring fence the rest of Europe and contain the problem within Greece have failed miserably and now the euro system is deeply in dire All right. straits. All right, Let, we'll, we'll get on to the euro in just a moment. Let me just give uh, Vagelis one chance here to, to put a, a final word in on the, on the conditions within Greece itself. And what we're talking about here seems to be failings at every level, not simply uh, the economic model that, that you were criticizing a moment ago or the public sector, private sector uh, debate. We've got uh, at every level, at government level, at uh, personal level, at corporate level, failings of corruption uh, and of lack of, uh, of good faith if you like, haven't we? In a way, yes. And we have to distinguish between problems from symptoms. The large public debt is not a problem. It's a symptom of a problem. And the problem being a very large government that basically could not uh, uh, receive But equally a symptom, as we've been saying, a fact of the fact that no one pays their taxes. I mean, the large government can be supported if they manage to collect the taxes that were due to them. I think one needs to balance the, uh, the public finances. When you have uh, a government that for the last uh, 15 years was running growth rates at over 35 to 4% of GDP, uh, one would expect to find uh, the leeway to actually at least balance its books. It's not a matter of inability to, to collect taxes. It's, it goes beyond that. It's, uh, it's uh, living easy, if you like, by spending and uh, supporting uh, practices that were not competitive, that were not actually feasible from a, uh, from a balancing point of view. I mean, we are, let's not forget, we are actually uh, passing the debt to the next generation. We are actually spending more uh, now, or we spent in the past, and uh, we are so far been willing to, to pass this on to our kids and uh, to just hope that they somehow find a way to get out of it. This cannot be sustained. And the fact that the model is collapsing 
um, gives us the opportunity to find a new model. I'm not necessarily a proponent of, right. uh, uh, of doing this in, uh, in one or two years. I mean, uh, difficult decisions will take time to actually be implemented. However, we have uh, uh, currently uh, a recipe uh, being spelled out by uh, the IMF and the European Union that even that is running behind schedule because of lack of implementation. Uh, and right, of course people lose confidence in, in this and it's quite important that, I mean I'm in favour of a deeper recession but a shorter one by taking full measures as opposed to taking half measures and having a U-shaped longer uh, recession that will test public patience. Okay, let, let, let me bring it on to the, the European situation then. Uh, and Fotis, let me get a perspective from you as someone who uh, has focused so far on, on what you see as domestic problems. Do you think you, the Europe uh, situation is significant in what's going on in Greece and either to blame or as a, as a solution do you think Europe is, is relevant? Well, it's obvious that uh, the strong uh, the central countries of Europe um, uh, go, go forth with uh, their own uh, interests. Uh, on the other hand, um, we are uh, in essence uh, the canary in the, in the um, uh, you know, uh, in the uh, deep hole. So. Uh, we really have to, to, to get this uh, referendum from, uh, from our government uh, in, uh, or else uh, this, this uh, package of, uh, of austerity measures will, uh, will never be able to, to implement. All right. Uh, l let's, let's look to solutions then. Uh, Yanis, you've been critical of, gr uh, of the European situation on many levels. Does Europe have a part to play in trying to solve this problem, do you think? This problem can only be solved at the European level. Europe is both the problem and the solution. And it is a problem that afflicts all the peoples of Europe from north to south, from east to west. And this is a problem that we must sort out collectively. It How? is a great fallacy to think that this is a Greek... Well, either we shall have to let the euro go and allow the cascade of defaults which will start here in Greece uh, take the whole euro project down with it. Or the only alternative to that is to redesign the architecture of the euro system by means of three very simple steps. The first step must involve ending the denial that euro, the, the Europe is at the moment regarding its banking sector. The banking sector of the Eurozone is in tatters and must be recapitalized urgently. The FSF could do that, the European Financial Stability uh, Fund, instead of uh, giving expensive loans to insolvent nations. The second step must be a partial unification of sovereign debt by means of transferring, not purchasing it, transferring it to the center, either, either a European debt agency or the European Central Bank itself, and financing this through the issue of Eurobonds that in the long term, the member states repay to the centre. And the third step must involve uh, a, a new kind of Marshall Plan for Europe because the only thing that is going to allow the Europe as a whole, and in particular the periphery with Greece being one small part of it, to drag it out of the mire and right. the mud in which it has now been stuck, is investment. You call it, you call it <laughs> three very simple steps. Some might look at that as being the, the ultimate nuclear option. Um, let, let, <laughs> well, either that or the euro goes. Vangelis, let's, let's come to you. Facing as Europeans. Let's come to you on this because it would appear that uh, the European policymakers are not agreeing at all with what Yanis is saying. They're still trying to find some sneaky little middle ground which would, they can sell as not a bailout and not a default, uh, but will in fact achieve both those, uh, both those aims and and try and keep all parties happy uh, and all things level. Do you think they'll achieve that? And do you think it's actually the right way forward? I think we all agree that Greece needs more time to actually implement very tough measures. You cannot simply uh, turn around 20 years or more of uh, bad public management into a couple of years. Uh, Europe is, I think, taking the right steps to give Greece more time. Uh, I think they're giving also Greece the initiative 
to, to try and, and find ways to reduce the deficit. Well, I mean, when you say the right steps, the what exactly do you think that, that Europe is going to do at this stage? Because we're having meetings now where the, uh, the IMF, the uh, European Central Bank, uh, that everyone is getting together to try and find out what exactly they should do at this point. And like I say, they're trying to avoid the word um, default. Uh, and they're trying to provide some meaningful support that would keep the market happy in some sense or another. Uh, but we don't even know exactly how it's going to work out. That's right, we don't. And this is new ground for everybody. I think there's only two ways you can buy time. One is by giving more money, and secondly is by uh, somehow agreeing to uh, uh, not receiving uh, the debt redemptions as they come due in order, in other, in order to give the Greek government uh, more leeway uh, to flex its finances for the next you know, five or six years. I personally believe also Europe is half believing Greece uh, in the sense that a lot of people are saying, okay, you haven't met your targets, you, haven't met your tar you, you have uh, badly spent money yeah. for the last 20 years, why should we believe you now? And uh, in my personal opinion, I think a solution will be found for the short term and this solution will give Greece the opportunity to reduce its debt, which is not sustainable, by uh, taking advantage of the uh, significant uh, real estate as well as public sector uh, wealth that it has. Okay. Should it fail to do so, I think in 2014 we will, or 2015 if you like, we will be looking at a possible restructure of the debt. There's no other way to make Greece sustainable because the idea is not to kill Greece, is to help Greece right. get out of it, to get out of its own mess. Fotis, we're, we're talking a lot of, uh, of policy here, a lot of jargon, a lot of economic numbers. As, as, uh, as a man on the street, if you like, as a protester, as, a, as an ordinary Greek who's looking for a, a way out of this, are you taking any faith from what you're hearing from our economists here? And do you think the people who are out on the streets right now will take any faith from any of this discussion? Um, I believe this, uh, uh, this question comes to me. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yes, uh, actually Greek people have formed a, a, way, a, a kind of collective knowledge. Uh, they don't really believe that uh, our politicians can, uh, can uh, actually uh, drive uh, the, the country out of, uh, of this chaos. Uh, and uh, the, the whole situation is, is uh, extraordinary because, uh, you know, we've been asked to, to uh, be uh, taken uh, those uh, loads of, of uh, uh, indebtment, uh, which is uh, more and more uh, non-sustainable, and at the same time uh, sell off all our uh, resources and uh, public uh, companies, uh, utilities and everything which, which are uh, the only way uh, to, to, to uh, fight this, uh, mm. this uh, monster of, of, uh, of the debt. So uh, this, this whole line of thought and this whole strategy uh, is not, uh, is not um, at all uh, respected by the Greek people. And uh, we are all determined to, to uh, decide for ourselves all right. uh, what we want to do. Gentlemen, we are uh, almost out of time. I just want to give one final answer to, to Yanis. Uh, you've, you've outlined what you think is the ideal solution. Let me ask you very quickly to outline what do you think is actually going to happen right now. I think that they're going to keep kicking the can down the road turning the economic, uh, the eco ECOFIN, the European Finance Meeting, into a linguist's uh, jamboree, uh, trying to find new terms by which to describe default. Look, th sir, two things we know. We economists disagree on almost everything, but there are two things we know which doesn't require jargon in order to put forward. First, you cannot help the insolvent, the bankrupt, by means of expensive loans. Secondly, a country which is in negative growth territory, in a recession, if you impose uh, significant reductions in government spending while the private sector is recoiling, uh, this is going to make uh, the recession worse and is going to enhance uh, the debt tragedy. So, and, and what has Europe been doing for the last year? Right. Precisely that. And what is it proposing to do now to continue along this path? Is it any wonder 
that Europe as a whole is in disarray, understanding that the present path leads to nowhere, All right. but not having the capacity, then political news to do something about it. And that, I'm afraid, is going to have to be the last word. Uh, we're entirely out of time. Thank you to my guests today, Vagelis Agiapitos, Fotis Bobolas, and Yanis Varoufakis, all of them in Athens. Thank you all for joining us here on this edition of Inside Story, and thank you for watching this program. We welcome your comments and suggestions. Our email is inside story at aljazeera.net. And that's it for now.